Hi, fellow reefers. I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video, well, I'm sitting down. I thought I, I do a different format. Uh, today, we're going to talk about a revised version of the care of the Gorgonian corals. So, uh, I'm saying revised because if you go back to my channel, people that follow me and so forth, uh, you're going to notice that I did do, I believe, one or two previous videos are Gorgonian corals. Now, those corals are no longer here. Uh, uh, there was a nutrient issue, different issues that, that I had involved, and I lost them. As you recall, if you go back, I had a non-photosynthetic uh, Gorgonian, which was right over here. That one also, uh, that's a, a no-no. I'll go into it when I go into the details. But always you should stick into the, uh, to the photosynthetic Gorgonians. Those are easier to keep. So this video is going to be uh, all about that. I have it there on the corner. And let's go ahead and take a deep dive. Okay, uh, here we are in front of the tank, focused at the Gorgonian coral. Now this is what I found out. Again, this is a revised uh, study that I did when it came to Gorgonians. Okay, Gorgonians are considered a soft coral. Now, the Gorgonians uh, are found in many areas of the oceans. Most are found in shallow coastal waters down to depths of, I would say, 985 feet, with only a few living in deeper seas. Now, this family of soft coral is also called sea whips or sea fans. Individual tiny polyps form colonies that are normally erected, flattened, branching, and, and uh, reminiscent of a fan. Others may be whip-like, bushy, like this one, or even encrusting. A colony can be several feet high and across, but only a few inches thick. Now, Gorgonians are members of the subclass Otocorelia. This group is called the Otocorals and loosely referred to as soft corals. Like most Otocorals, Gorgonians are colonial sesial animals. Sesial means they are anchored to, a, to, the, uh, to the substrate. And from there, they can be either erected or encrusting. Gorgonians have central stem that is tough, yet very flexible. It is considered with a living surface called a rin, R-I-N-D, which is embedded with small polyps. The stem attaches to the substrate with the delicate branches radiating outward. Now the suborder of this species, in, uh, of this specific species, you know, there's, there's two suborders, but this one, we're concentrating on this one, which is the Holozonia. Now, Holozonia Gorgonians have an axial skeleton composed of a fibrous protein substance known as Gorgonian. Similar to animal horns, thus the names Gorgonian and horn coral are derived, also known as bushy sea rods, which is this species, this specific suborder species. Now the scientific name of this specific species is Ramphala aggregata. They must be anchored to the substrate and need a, a brisk water movement. Most are photosynthetic, which this one of course is the, the majority are, and are highly recommended ones to keep as opposed to the non-photosynthetic ones. Care of photosynthetic gorgonians in general they need good lighting as well as strong currents, as you notice here. These derive much of their nutrition from a marine algae goat known zooxanthellae, contained in their tissue. Although most are not accustomed to the very strong lights, it is said that they will eventually adjust and grow faster because of it. Now, some photosynthetic gorgonians can be fed while others cannot. In either case, photosynthetic gorgonians don't need to be fed in order to survive. Now that's the actual study that I actually made. And now uh, basically what I wanted to talk about when it comes to movement 
and uh, the light. As you notice here, I have it on the on the left side. It, it's got ample lights, and then the um, the water movement, as you notice, is all there, as I uh, prescribed as we were speaking. Now, when it comes to feeding, all animals uh, in the reef that are zoosynthetic, uh, in other words, that are photosynthetic, you do not have to feed them. You really don't need to feed them, but I, I uh, do. So what I do is, of course, if you follow me, you'll notice in the previous videos, I feed them um, phyto feast, um, oyster feast, reef roids. So that basically is what I'm uh, feeding all of my animals, including, of course, the gorgonia. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video, found it interesting, educational, and fun. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And next to it, there's a little bell. That's the notification bell. So if you depress that, you'll activate your notification feature on your device. And every time I upload, which is usually weekly, you'll be the first ones to note that Eddie's Reef of Korea uploaded a video. And before I close, uh, there's other corals that I bought at Worldwide Corals. I went ahead and I bought a new enchanada, a rainbow enchanada. It's beautiful. It's got multicolors. And I also uh, bought a purple Tutsto. But that I'll leave it for the upcoming videos. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, bye-bye.